What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. As always, we're gonna be going through the app, answering questions. This week's question comes from Tristan Rowe 97 Is there any reason why you don't see stringers instead of weaves on 6G TIG pipe, or is it just a preference? Let me answer that, because we might have something confused here. Now there's some techniques and stuff that go involved with this type of welding, and stringers with the little dip dab, dippity dab technique, I've never actually done before, but I'm seeing it a lot. So let's talk about that. First off, what's a weave and what's a stringer, right? So a weave is typically one of these done where there's a lot of manipulations, whether you're doing circles, you're doing zigzags, you're doing just, you know, use, whatever. There's a lot of motion going involved and you're covering a lot of area and filling with a lot of metal right here. Whereas a stringer, you could actually be doing a lot of these motions, but just in a smaller pattern. You could be doing those same circles, those same zigzags, or you can be doing those crescents, whatever you like, as far as a pattern, just not near as wide. This one should not exceed three times the electrode size or wire size, if you will, if it's like TIG wire. So if it's a 1 8 rod, then you've got a 3 8 weld size for it to be a stringer. If it goes outside that 3 8 you may consider it a weave. Now this is kind of still loosely, there's still tolerance to this. Next off, I'd like to ask you guys a question. Which one is actually stronger? This weld here with flush reinforcement or basically none, or this one with a little bit of reinforcement on top. Now minded this is, don't worry about the size of the weld on there, but this, these two are actually the same strength, okay? The, ba the weld is always as strong or stronger than the base metal. This reinforcement is added to make sure that we are at least flush with everything, but everything is as strong as the smallest point, right? Or the thinnest member. So these little spots right here are actually stress risers in the weld. If anywhere it's gonna break, it's gonna be in these spots with reinforcement. But we need that reinforcement so that we know we're at least past this, because if we're under this, then it breaks in the weld. As far as your weaves versus stringers, weaves consists of not as many passes, filling up a lot, more metal in one location and not having to take as many passes where stringer we have multiple passes in here the difference is you're not carrying near as much metal so there's going to be an argument there that i could do it faster in one pass than you do in a bunch of stringers but you're staying in one spot longer putting a lot of stress and heat into the parent metal which is no good so usually stringer beads do a lot better at that the other argument is this and this is what we considered stress risers up here. So there's a lot of pressure put on those two spots. Whereas stringer beads, yeah, that has that stress riser and that's one, but it's also spread out between the points of where those valleys tie in, making it a lot smoother, spreading that stress across. That's the argument why stringer beads put in less stress than say a weave. But this guy failed anyway. He's got like a big old slag inclusion. All right, we're running this ESOB Rebel 285 and we're doing it just like I used to do it in the field, climbing pipe racks and all that. Scratch start rig, we've got our machine tied in. We got, we got a connector for these because it really looks better with a two-piece rig with that gas valve out here and this two-piece connected so that we don't have anything off to the side or don't have to worry about anything arcing off because we've got a weird block set up. We're gonna be talking again now, kind of walk the cup versus freehand. It doesn't matter how the weld goes on there. That bevel needs to be full of nice, clean steel, metal, stainless, whatever you're putting inside that bevel just has to be clean and smooth. And it doesn't even have to be pretty guys. It just has to be clean on the inside. So it doesn't matter if you dip, weave or walk. We're going to talk about only doing stringers because if there's more than one bead on a piece of pipe, it's likely that they did stringer beads, you know, as long as we're within those three eighths and that with TIG is a little bit loosely followed as far as weld size. Now it's not gonna be very easy to get arc shots on this piece of pipe. So we've got a little piece of angle iron chucked in a vise, and we're gonna go over this little bit of technique that we're gonna need. Now, as far as walking it in this kind of a simulation of a groove, we're just gonna work back and forth using a 1 8 TIG wire and not to get out outside of those 3 8 of an inch tolerance. And you can just kind of eyeball it. And the other ones, we're gonna be doing almost the same weld size, but we're not gonna move anything back and forth. So we're gonna really fill into each dip and then pull that tungsten back every time we feed that wire so that we look kind of something like this, where we feed in, pull up and away to pull that metal back over top of it with a little dancey dance. You gotta do a little dancey dance. As far as welding inside this little piece of whatever it is, scrap steel that I got, we've got the same size weld. We did one pass and then we did a two pass weld right over top of whatever I had underneath it. 
Now that weave over there, if you want to call it a weave, is still within tolerances. Again, we're going to consider it a stringer. Now, up against these two stringers, you know, obviously it's a little bit wider, but they're both stringer beads. Now, as far as the dip, we had to freehand it. I'm not a big freehand fan because I got soft hands, I guess. But if you need to take finger, you need a couple things in order not to burn up your fingers. That's why I prefer to walk it. But a lot of times, especially in field situations, you're not able to get your torch into it to where you can swing it all wide like that. You're going to have to freehand it. What I did like about the freehand dip method is I'm able to control my amount of metal that I'm putting in there. And I can honestly carry quite a bit of iron. I think it's a little bit fuller than the side by side or the, you know, that weave or walk, if you want to call it. But let's try it on some pipe. Now, I still haven't even answered the dude's question. He's asking, why don't you ever see TIG welds in the 6G position with stringer beads on the cap? Now, again, I just want to clarify what even is a stringer or what is a weave. Likely, they're putting a multi-bead pass with this walk the cup method that looks like a weave, but in all reality, code-wise, it's still considered a stringer, depending who you ask, I guess. Now, it's clear as day that these dips are going to be a stringer method. We're not doing any side to side or washing that puddle out. So I've actually already flushed this pipe out. We put a root in it. It looks good. I had to practice a little bit before we put this thing on camera and see what the cap's going to look like and see what the difference is between the stringer. Am I going to have to put in more welds on the walk to cup or less welds? Stringer beads, I'm going to have to have a five bead cap or a four bead cap. At the end of the day, uh, it's like how many tacos does it take you to get full? You know, depends on the size of the taco and depends on how hungry you are. So we've got a big bevel here. If we got big tacos with our walk the cup, then we might only need four beads. If we have the stringer beads and we just can't stretch the width of it, we're not going to try. We're just going to put five beads. Now, if the code requires something different, it is what it is. But We've already got it, everything ready to cap, and let's just pitter patter, let's cap her. I've never done this freehand dip technique. I, I really like walking the cup, but a lot of my experience comes from welds that weren't technically in a bind that much. I uh, have been in some places where you can only freehand. In a large 2G pipe, you're not gonna wanna sit there and crank it out like that. It's a lot easier to hold it and do like this. So you'll see a lot of these field welders with this dip technique. Let's get into like kind of pros and cons of it. We got the cap on there, this side's walked out, this side's got the dab technique. Let's get into it. A weld size wise, we had to put an extra extra bead. So there's four beads on here, considerably done faster, probably the same amount of time for one more bead. It's on there and it's it's really well within that tolerance of calling it a stringer bead. It was fairly easy to do. For a first time at it, we kept everything in the bevels, I think a little bit better than the other side. As far as my walk the cup side, this is my hard side of my 6G. So there is a little bit of bead profile issues and that's that one eighth wire. It's very close to if not just right past the tolerance of calling it a stringer or not but it's still considered a stringer bead we multi-bead capped it we got a stringer on there as far as the other side let's look at it now looking at the weld profile the stringer beads they've got a nice smooth just barely any reinforcement no valleys in between them we've got mostly that right down here we got this low spot and that was from trying to weave too much and that's why it's kind of scary to do anything weavy or stringer weavy on anything in a six or 2G position because gravity is pulling down this way. Carrying less metal is usually the way to go when it comes to welding these out. Across the bottom, those tie-ins did okay. Could have probably done better to keep them straight, but you can see the sag and the bead compared. There's like a nice even reinforcement right here. I'm actually very, very pleased with that. At the end of the day, guys, it just comes down to preference and code. It's not up to you whether you put a stringer or a weave on there. It's up to the inspector or the company man or whatever procedure you're following. That's the cookbook that you follow and you do your best to follow it. Now, as far as these stringers and weaves, again, I've never done this dip technique. And quite frankly, I really like it. I had to turn it up a little bit more and I feel like I had a little bit more control over the amount of fill I was able to put in there. Keeping up with the angle change is a little trickier. 
And then I don't like my hands getting super duper hot, but it is what it is. We've got those game changers on. It was really easy to just do it anyway. So I really like this stick technique or the stringer technique that everybody's talking about. They're all doing, but people are still kind of wondering what the heck is it about? But I hope that answers your question, brother. Stringers are stringers, weaves are weaves. These are both, this is the same weld. It'll get the job done either way. It'll shoot.